So let's say you are in a surgical posting and ED refers you for a case of trauma with CC. It can be from fall, it can be from MVA or something else, it doesn't really matter. So you can take the history from the patients or the PAP or some eyewitness since in some cases the patient will have low GCS or simply have retrograde amnesia and unable to remember the incidents. Of course, the first thing first is to understand what happens, to understand exactly what's the mechanism of the trauma. Is it an MVA? Is it a fall? Or hit by something? So if it is MVA, we ask if it's car versus car, motorbike versus car, motorbike skidded or car versus tree. We try to understand if the patient is wearing seatbelt, wearing helmet, how fast the patient is going, and if the patient is under influence. Basically, we try to understand the mechanism of the injury. But the important things to ask is what happened to the patient post-trauma. Does the patient have loss of consciousness? And how long does it take for the patient to regain the consciousness? Does the patient have projectile vomiting? Does the patient have any blurry of visions? Have any neurological deficit? Have any retrograde amnesia? Headache, dizziness? And of course, to screen for any abdomen and chest trauma, we ask the patient if the patient have any pain in the abdomen and on the chest. Next is the general examinations. Of course, firstly, is the GCS of the patients. And as we are referred for CC, we will look for wounds in the head, examine the pupil, look for bleeding from the ear and nose, and check for any neurological deficit. And for general examination, check for chest spring, check for pelvic spring, and palpate the abdomen. For the instrumental test, the main thing that your boss want to know is the CT brain. Whether is there any intracranial bleed and what type it is. Chest x-ray is good to look for any lung contusions, any rib fractures, and any pneumothorax. And if there's any reason to suspect abdominal injury, your boss would probably do a fast scan to look for free fluid. So the plan for the patient will obviously depended on what kind of head injury and how severe it is. If there is ICB, then perhaps craniotomy drainage. Some intracranial bleed will need to be operated, while some patients will go through cerebral resuscitation first. While if mild head injury, most often we will observe the patient for one day before discharge. The usual plan will be GCS monitoring with pupil examination hourly times 2, dually times 2, then 4 hourly. KMBM for the first 24 hour and some pain medication that is not trauma though. By the way, we classify head injuries into mild, moderate, and severe based on GCS, duration of post-traumatic amnesia, and duration of loss of consciousness. Another good thing to know is how to differentiate SDH, SAH, and EDH from CT brain. SDH will be concave in shape, EDH biconvex in shape, SAH will be filling in the subarachnoid space.